Okay, here we are back in Sundals the Multiverse, and... Well, to be honest, it's games like this one that really made me hate doing the one-shots for a while, and... I don't know if I want to take another break or not. <laughs> so, if you don't know what's going on here, you have Challenge Mode Matriarch, which means her Dominion cards are indestructible, and as a result, you spend a freaking eternity in the menus. And to make things worse, they give you a team that has even more targets than normally of all of Unity's bots. You have the four Sentinels. The only way this could be worse is if Captain Cosmic were here. And, yeah. This is going to be an extremely annoying game, I can tell you already. Dr. Medico Frown. You can't really see him because he's cut off, but he's right around here. I don't like using her as bait to find missing children. We should check the carnival. That's still around here. Mainstay nodded. He's the dude that's over here, but cut off. Nine as Pauline Parsons pushed the idealist on the swing set. Idealist, yo. Unity shrugged. I'm glad I'm not the kid any longer. Out of the corner of everyone's eyes, Ride slid from a shadow. Anyone knows there are a lot of birds around here? It's bad for mice. So they say here, designed by Brad Bell. I don't know if that means he's a guy from Greater Than Games forums or what exactly, but. I don't know why you'd want to make something this damn annoying. So keep off the swings. Challenge Mode Matriarch, Unity, Sentinels, and Beacon Argo. Hear my song of pain and sorrow. Almost know the might of Corvus. Bad guys. Oh no. Looks like it's time to make some friends with emphasis on make. So she'll play her mask first, and then she plays every single card until she runs into two cards that are not foul cards. So in case you're wondering, I don't actually remember the numbers offhand. I think it's something like 60% of her deck, maybe even like 75%, are foul cards. So right there we hit the first non-foul, which is a one-shot, and then the mask picks up. So we play, we go to the domain card, and that's where everything stops. So, one point of sonic damage across the board. Now that I think about it, isn't she the only one who really deals sonic damage? Actually, maybe misinformation. She's the other one I really hate to play. So, Unity's hand sucks. Give me a new one. Get rid of that. This. And this. So, most of the... I should also point this out. Most of the birds deal one hit point of damage, like this one. This is the exception. And Matriarch herself is going to deal 1 damage because she does hero minus 2, and the Sentinels only count as 1 hero. So, 1 psychic damage, you can block all that with Stealth Bot. So we need a Pylon, we need a Stealth Bot, and we need a Swift Bot so we can get more cards. So nothing you can do here, skip. So for the Sentinels, we have 1... well, we have 2 nukes, but they're the same card. So, first order of business is killing that mask, because that increases her card plays. If you don't pick this off, <laughs> it's only a matter of time until she flips, and I don't mean that in a good way. So we're going to block, so we can block some of the damage the Idealist is going to take from the Kettle of Vultures. Beacon has three points of damage on her eyes, so we can use that. And since we only take one point of damage from the Matriarch, I'm going to play Fortitude now for security purposes. In case you're wondering about Inspiring Presence, you do not want to play that in this environment. <laughs> if you don't know how the carnival works, there's a lot of self-damage, so... Like, Maze of Mirrors is self-damage, Carousel of Horror is, Freak Show is not, Shooting Gallery is, Wheel of Misfortune is, and You Won't Believe Your Eyes is. So if you play the Inspiring Presence, you will probably die. Anyway, Eye Lasers. Now the sad part is she has three one-shots, I believe, that can actually fish that out of her trash. There's the shooting gallery, so there you go. If we played the Inspiring Presence, we would take a lot of damage here. So Unity, it, well, only Unity is going to get hit, because all the other ones are now Nemesis forgot. So only Unity is going to take damage here.
Murder of Crows. There's the card that brings her mask back. Luckily, the mask can't do anything until next turn. So in the meantime, we want to play our pylon. We will use the pylon so we can make her friends. Stealth Bot and Swift Bot. So now she has one point of damage reduction as well. Technically, everyone does, since Stealth Bot will block for everyone. Anyway, we need to pop the mask again, so horrifying economy. It's really depressing that this is more important than actually hitting her. So anyway, Stealth Bot will block for us. As a result, I am going to use the telekinetic jab to hit Matriarch. Hey, unique capabilities. There we go. So we can start getting the Sentinels off the ground. Um, right here, we want to stop her from playing cards, so let's do a takedown. We will use the eye lasers on the mask once again. And we're at least guaranteed one turn without it coming back. So no, keep Stealth Bot's health up. Out comes the unstable midway, so I want to go invulnerable next turn. Um, this will be completely nullified by Stealth Bot. Including the Nemesis stuff. So the one thing that sucks about doing it this way is that you do get more menu prompts that you can redirect everything in the stealth bot. So if you ever wondered, Hero, why don't you ever play more games against the Matriarch? This is why. Oh man, this is driving me crazy already. And we've only dealt two points of damage to her. So the sad part is Stealth Bot is getting poked a bit by the Kettle of Vultures. The good news is those are going to die to the midway, unless I kill them myself here, which is an option. I just have to look and see what cards can do it well for me. Oh man. I think I'm going to spend more time in menus than actually playing cards. Okay, so several days later my turn finally arrived. For Unity we will do a Brainstorm. We can poke... Hey, we got Flash Forge. I can play that. We will poke her for one point of damage. Now the thing is, I can shoot one of the birds just to get rid of them. So, have Beacon absorb that, and then Stealth Bot will absorb all these. So, we're going to use Flash Forge and discard our hand once again. So, trivia time. These three heroes. There's something that's lacking between these two that only Unity has here. And if you said environment manipula manipulation, you are correct. So we're going for a pair of B-Bots here. And then I don't even think I have any equipment out, so... It'd be nice if I could have sacrificed the takedown, but that's not how that works. Yeah, it's only equipment cards. Anyway. So you can do a bit of a combo here with the shooting gallery. The thing that you need to do is play unique capabilities, and you want Hippocratic Oath. So now you want to make Dr. Medico the lowest HP guy, because that'll proc the shooting gallery, and as a result, you can turn all of this damage into healing. So the Hippocratic's in play, we need to boost the Idealist. The best way to do that is with a good hero, bad hero. And then we can go ahead and hit the Matriarch. And since we're going to go invulnerable this turn, I'll show that, but just know how it involves heroic interception in case you're wondering. Um, we want to give her the old telekinetic jab. And we drew Aura of Vision. So for this one, you want to patch up Stealth Bot. You want to give Idealist one hit point so she's tied with Medico. You do not want to heal Medico at all because 
idealist is capped. So if you go any higher, she's going to be the lowest, and the shooting gallery is going to shoot you up. So anyway, time to go invulnerable so we don't have to deal with the midway. Heroic Interception is a go. You want to send this into Stealth Bot because Heroic Interception will block that. And then you can give the old eye lasers to Matriarch. Bolster allies, that can be helpful here. So here we go, spending yet another eternity in the menu. Like, I wish I had something that I could say, something witty or whatever, but we're going to spend so much time in the menu that I'd probably need a full week to prepare enough material. All I can say is I really hope it's another year before we see Matriarch. And then real quick, if you don't know what her challenge mode does specifically, this card is indestructible. Anything with domain, I think I called it Dominions, but same, effectively the same thing. It's just depending on how sensitive you are to keywords. So redirect that away from Beacon, and you are golden. Out comes the Freak Show, so the target with the lowest HP cannot deal damage, and the Maze of Mirrors. Lowest HP... Now, that we're asking about a character card here, because the bots themselves are the low HP target that cannot actually deal damage. So I have Medico go off here. Actually, right here, it doesn't really matter. She plays Munin. And that's kind of it. <laughs> Okay, so we will play the... Remember, I have two card plays here, so we want to play a Volatile Parts and a Pylon. We are going to use the Pylon to summon the Twin Bees. And that's a wrap, for now. So now the thing is, I need to kill a bee to have the Maze of Mirrors go off. So we'll play the Aura of Vision, since I can't really deal damage here. And in case... like, hmm... If something comes out that deals two or more damage, because I could try to manipulate her deck a little bit with Writhe, I could patch up Unity, or I can block. Hmm. Let's block. Play it safe. Patch up Stealth Bot. Patch up Unity. Patch up Beacon. There goes the heroic intervention. Or not. Yeah. Is it intervention or interception? Interception. So anyway, right here we can use bolster allies because there's nothing else I can do here at the moment, really. So that gives turret bot, unique capabilities, and the legacy ring. So the ring is helpful if you want to just give unity something to sacrifice, but we're not that much of a team player. Out comes the wheel of misfortune, so everything's going to hit itself. Low HP man is Doc Medico. Okay, this will work. So, order does kind of matter. You want to use Hippocratic here. That will allow you to heal her. Okay, so we're going to heal the entire team except for Doc. Patch up Stealth Bot. Beacons at full. Ah oh, man. Okay, never mind. False alarm. So I think if I didn't use block, I'd actually heal for more here. That's heartbreaking, man. Give that 
to Unity. Give this one to Writhe. And now order here matters. So we want her to hit herself. Munin won't do anything because he doesn't have... Hold on. Increase damage to... Okay, it doesn't increase his damage, only Matriarchs, that's why. So we want to hit a Bebot. Maze of Mirrors. We do not wish to redirect. No, it is not the low HP. So no, I'll have Unity take that. So real quick, if I want to kill Munin, I can play Volatile Parts and summon Raptorbot. I have the unique capabilities which I'm going to use for Caligonous Form. So Order there did matter, you want to do the Volatile Parts first from the very least since it seems like that would bounce back. Let's hit Munin. I want to make sure he dies here. And then we want to kill the Maze of Mirrors. So redirect all that into Stealth Bot, and you're golden. In case you saw something pop up there, Freak Show was asking me if I wanted to discard two cards for Bebot to attack, and I said no. So this complicates things a bit. So keep my immune and boosts her damage. So if I start popping birds here, she actually can hurt Legacy. I'll beacon to be precise. So I can use Robot Reclamation to retrieve a Bebot. Thing is, do I want to retrieve the Bebot? Because I don't really have a way to play it at the moment. I'm thinking now I'm just going to use this for a card draw. Champion bot. Play the volatile parts. We are going to destroy the volatile parts to bring out Raptor bot. Drew a platform bot and power shockwave. So keep in mind, I don't have anything to actually play any of the bots with. So I can hit Munin here for four, and then I still have to kill the mask. So if I hit Munin for four, that will knock him down to two. I'd have to hit him with a coordinated assault. Actually, no, there's a different way to do this. So... Beacon has Thok, right? Yeah, she does. So that's three points, her eyes are three. I'm wondering, can I kill the mask here? So, yeah, let's have Raptorbot hit Munin. So I'm gonna get the card draw to Unity because I need to find something to play with her. Wow. So I have all these bots, but no bench, no crates. The sad part is some of this is partially due to me just discarding my entire hand for pylons, but yeah, that sucks, man. So anyway, we're going for clicking this form. The reason for that going is we want reason for that is we want ongoing cards. That way when she plays her one card that destroys ongoings, we can save some things. So team communication. Sentinel tactics is very tempting, but I need raw damage here. So coordinated assault. Doesn't really matter who you have deal this, I don't have the Durasteel chains out or anything. That's overkill to the bird, so we'll hit the mask for five. And then we can use our telekinetic jab on the mask to knock it down to two. So right here, heal unity, heal writhe, heal mainstay. And then Thok, Munin is the big fish, so to speak. And then eye lasers to the mask. So 
So keep in mind the birds should die of the wheel of misfortune. Abandon big time causes the deck to speed up its play. Low HP is Doc. And now order here does matter. Well, it doesn't really matter exactly, it's just pay attention to how you do this. So I want to heal Mainstay. And now redirect everything else into Stealth Bot. Which means more menus. Sublime. So I do have the option to sacrifice Bebot here, but there's all sorts of other nasty things that can come out, like primarily this one. So I really don't want to do that if I don't have to. So let's spend a few more minutes in menus. Bounce off beacon, please. So she still has six more birds to pop. Like, I'm wondering why they called this thing anything involving swings. This is definitely a menu simulator. simulator. Actually, then again, is it really a simulator if you actually are combing through menus for half the game? Those are the kinds of thoughts a normal person would have while sitting through all this, I guess. So anyway, we can talk about B-Bots real quick. Matriarch has no um, ongoings in her deck that's all one-shots or targets. So as a result, if you call out the B-Bots, it is for environment manipulation purposes in this particular setup. It's possible you may want to destroy one of your own ongoings, I guess, but that's kind of rare. I think I have done that in videos in the past. Probably something like Omnitron U with his volatile wiring, wiring type thing. Okay, we're almost there. So just keep in mind, pretty soon I'll be able to unleash Raptor Bot on Matriarch herself, and with that, and hopefully a Platform Bot, because I can sacrifice one more Volatile Parts to bring that out. That's almost 10 points of damage per turn. She doesn't have that much in terms of HP. And with Munin in the trash, she doesn't have any more damage reduction unless she pulls the other one, Hugin or something like that. Which will summon Munin. Okay, her turn, Cacophony. So at this point, I don't really need the Hippocratic Oath. I can block the Shooting Gallery with Stealth Bot, so we'll get rid of that one. We will get rid of Fortitude, because I have Stealth Bot. We'll get rid of Cloaking Swarm, because I have Stealth Bot. We'll keep the Aura of Vision, pretty much just so I can get card draws and hopefully get Unity going in the event that this goes uh, probably like three more rounds. And keep in mind, I can still get the Durasteel Chain, that'll cause Mainstay to deal a little bit more damage, but not too much. So here, my best bet is probably the Powered Shockwave. It'd deal a little bit more if I held onto it for one more turn, but... Yeah, let's just get this little show on the road. 
So sacrifice the other part for the platform bot, which in turn increases raptor bot's damage, I should point out. Got a hasty augmentation. Get to hit her for six, and then three more. So... So the hasty augmentation can... Let's see, this turn I'm going to play Sentinel Tactics, so let's give this a Unity still. Drew a Brainstorm, that can be helpful. So Sentinel Tactics, we will go ahead and hit the Matriarch, and we're going to start using Ride's ability to manipulate her deck so we can try to take stuff out. So her deck, we peek at her bottom card, uh, Building of Rooks, okay. So this goes after the High Man, which is Beacon, unfortunately I just got rid of Fortitude, so she's going to take full damage from this. Trash that thing. I should point out she should only have one more of her Dark in the Sky left. She has three of those. And the sad part is the odds of her playing that one, two, three, so 33% chance. You have to remember you can't count the falls because those are going in play no matter what. Anyway, we can stop her from playing anything with takedown. Give her the old eye lasers. Now we have to see what horrors the environment throws at us next. And my answer is no. Beacon can take it. Out comes world's biggest pool table. That's going to hit Beacon and Matriarch. Unstable Midway. That's AoE for next turn. Low man. This doesn't matter, as I was saying, because you can just send all of it in stealth mode. If you really wanted to, you could pop the B-Bot, but the downside to that is... The Freak Show will then disable Raptor Bot unless you discard. You could discard if you really wanted to, but I'm cheap. That's all it comes down to. As such, Bebop gets a lease on life. So, spin that Stealth Bot to that too. Oh crud, I need to actually do this. Oh well. Let's look at a Turret Bot, Champion Bot. Champion Bot is just like, um. Yeah. That's fine, I guess. No. So she isn't going to do anything this turn. So we're going to do a brainstorm. First, because I have Swiftbot for two card plays here, and I kind of got ripped off there. So if I popped Bebot here, Raptor Bot would lose damage. And the thing that's going to give me the most here is if I use Hasty Augmentation, because I don't have a point in playing this. We're going to give this to the Sentinels. It's one less point of damage than if I gave it to beacon, but by doing that, Sentinel Tactics activates, and we can start manipulating her deck a little bit more. So the card we're looking for is Hugin, which is right there. So trash that thing. And that's one big headache we don't have to worry about. So we drew a pylon. The thing is, she might die this turn. Give this to the Sentinels, fling into darkness, that's no help. So the thing that's going to deal the most damage would be this, which will deal a total of 5 to her. Actually, this will deal 5 anyway, so... In that regard, it doesn't really matter. Let's go for this one, just in case. Who you have deal the damage doesn't matter, because unless you have, um... I'm trying to blank here. <laughs> the Duraseal Chain mainstay won't deal more. So we could manipulate her deck a little bit more. What all does she still have? Actually, no, I don't think I want to touch it because if I discard something, she can darken the sky. So we're going to give three hit points over to Beacon, I think. Eh, we'll do this. That way I can get through the menus a little bit more quickly. And hey, there's the Durasteel Chain! So the thing I want to play here, I'm thinking, is 
danger sense, so I don't have to worry about the unstable midway. Actually, hold on. If I do this... Let's, let's go for the win. So she dies on the environment turn. You won't believe your eyes. That won't even get a chance to fire, though. So this is going to hit her for three. And then that poor, poor Bebop got splattered. So, finish her off. So, there's the mint. Everyone's in pretty good health overall. Unity's at full. Beacon's almost at full. Everyone of the Sentinels other than Medico is. So, we never really lost control in this match, which is kind of good news. Everyone's double digit except for Medico, as I was saying. Well, everyone's full health except for Medico and Beacon, I believe. Everyone. Unity, I think, is 26 hit points. But anyway, the other thing I wanted to look at real quick, so I said, I think it's been a year since the last Matriarch game. She is all the way... So I should have actually been counting the rows as I went down. <laughs> okay, so for the watch, maybe. So let's see, one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh no, she's up here. Okay. So that's okay. So there was a challenge one with Captain Cosmic. Sublime. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, it's almost been about a year. Hopefully it stays that way. But it's kind of interesting that both of these were challenge mode matriarch. Like they knew that it would make her more annoying than normal or something. I don't know. But anyway, that is it for now. I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.